Hi everyone, it's Michelle, wetlands and habitat biologist with the SSEA. The Severn Sound area has a problem with gypsy moths this year, so it's a great time to learn more about this invasive species. Gypsy moth is a non-native invasive insect that was brought to North America in the 1860s from Europe. It was first established in the USA and spread to Ontario by 1969. An important characteristic of the gypsy moth in Ontario is that their populations go through cycles of ups and downs. The image on the right from the National Forestry Database shows the peaks and valleys in the amount of area moderately to severely defoliated by gypsy moth in Ontario between 1990 on the left side of the graph and 2018 on the right side of the graph. Their population surges about every seven to 10 years, and when it rises rapidly, it is typically followed by a crash through a combination of competition and mortality from natural factors such as predators and disease. In Ontario, gypsy moth is beyond the stage where it can be completely eradicated, and as a result, it is expected to continue to have periodic population increases. Ontario has previously seen four outbreaks and in the SSEA area, we are experiencing an upsurge in populations again in 2019 and 2020. Knowing the different stages of the gypsy moth's life cycle is very important for knowing how to manage its spread and being aware of which control methods are effective and when. The oval egg masses are approximately three to six centimeters long and are covered in tan colored hairs. They are present on trees, outdoor furniture, buildings and other surfaces from late summer through winter to the following spring. From approximately late April until early to mid July is when the gypsy moth is in its caterpillar stage. They hatch quite small and then grow and molt several times to get to be up to six centimeters long and are light gray to black in color and hairy with five pairs of blue dots and six pairs of red dots. The caterpillar stage is when gypsy moth is most destructive as it consumes leaves of trees and shrubs. In July and August, the caterpillars usually move to a sheltered location to begin transforming into the winged moth. The pupa has a dark brown shell and in this stage they no longer feed on trees. Adult gypsy moths typically emerge in July and August. Males are brown with feathery antennae. The whitish females are heavy and do not fly. Adults do not have mouth parts. Their sole purpose at that point is to mate and lay eggs. Gypsy moth caterpillars feed on the leaves of over 300 host plant species, mainly hardwood trees, but also evergreens such as pine. They are voracious eaters and can consume a significant amount of leaves defoliating trees, and produce a large amount of frass or caterpillar poop. Defoliation of trees is understandably concerning and can slow their growth, but healthy, mature trees typically survive and can usually handle one or two seasons of significant defoliation. Many of the mature trees in our area have been through the previous outbreaks of gypsy moth. However, if defoliation is combined with hot, dry summers, or if trees are impacted by other forest pests, or if trees and forests are previously stressed to begin with, there may be increased mortality. Trees may relief later in the summer, and fortunately for the trees, this often coincides with the moth stage when the species is no longer eating leaves. This current gypsy moth population increase will likely follow the historic pattern of outbreak and crash. The Ontario Ministry of Natural Resources and Forestry has a forest health monitoring program. They have been working this summer, as in other years, to map how much area is affected by gypsy moth and how severe the damage is. SSEA is also in regular contact with the County of Simcoe and other partners on invasive species issues such as gypsy moth. Gypsy moth population monitoring and forecasting potential future impacts can inform and guide decision making on appropriate control or management actions or strategies. An integrated pest management approach is recommended. Start with the least harmful to the environment and use a variety of control methods for best results. As the population peaks, a viral and fungal outbreak may occur, which can cause mass mortality in gypsy moths. NPV is often a very important factor in the collapse of outbreaks and has been observed causing mortality in the SSEA area in 2020. It spreads naturally, especially when the caterpillars are abundant because they are stressed from competition or food for food or space. Caterpillars killed by the fungus versus the virus present a little differently. 
NPV results in inverted V-shaped carcasses that liquefy quickly, while the fungus results in head down bodies that appear dry, stiff, and brittle. In both cases, dead caterpillars disintegrate within a few days. Other less gory natural controls include birds like cuckoos, blue jays, and orioles that will eat the hairy caterpillars, and chickadees that will feed on eggs, as well as small mammals and even some insect predators, including a wasp that parasitizes egg masses. Other natural controls include extended periods of extreme cold weather that can reduce survival of above ground egg masses. Home and property owners can take action. Always use gloves when handling gypsy moth since their hairs can cause skin irritation. You can destroy egg masses year round, scrape them off the trees and other surfaces and soak them in soapy water for a couple of days to ensure that they're dead. Health Canada also indicates that dormant oil, which is a thick oil used on fruit trees, applied late in winter will smother the eggs and prevent them from hatching. In the spring and throughout the summer, you can set up shade traps like a burlap band around the tree and hand pick caterpillars, pupa, and moths, then soak them in soapy water to kill them. Once the caterpillars are two or three centimeters in length by mid-June, they move down the tree to seek shelter from predators and heat during the day and feed on the trees at night. This is a good opportunity for the burlap band to trap them. You can check the trap daily and dump them into soapy water. Gypsy moths often pupate in the same shady areas where they take refuge during the day, and you can collect them in the same manner. You can also set up pheromone traps to target male moths in July and August. It is up to landowners to decide whether or not to have insecticides applied on their properties. Two of the ones used for gypsy moth are triazin injections for individual trees, which provides protection for one season and is usually used on high-risk trees. The other is a BTK spray for ground-based or aerial applications to leaves of affected trees. It targets gypsy moths but also kills newly hatched native caterpillar species that are feeding on plant material at the time the spray is being used. If either of the insecticides are used, appropriate timing of treatment is essential for successful control. It's time and weather sensitive. There's a very narrow treatment window. It must be applied during the early immature caterpillar stage when they just begin feeding on leaves. This is typically late May or early June, but can vary depending on weather conditions in any given year. The caterpillars must ingest the insecticide for it to work. It's not a contact insecticide. Products must be registered for legal use on gypsy moth and be purchased and applied by qualified pesticide applicators. A permit from the Ministry of Environment, Conservation and Parks, plus other federal, provincial or municipal permissions may be needed depending on the location and the proposed treatment. Talk with a forestry professional if you wish to manage the health of privately owned trees and woodlots. Thanks for watching. We hope you learned more about invasive gypsy moth. To report invasive species in the SSE area, email invasive species at severnsound.ca. To learn about other invasive species, check out our other videos on our YouTube channel. For more information on SSEA and our programs and projects, visit our website at www.severnsound.ca or follow us on Instagram at severnsoundea and Twitter at SSEA underscore SSRAP. And be sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons below.